Hello guys, my name is Kamsi. I work as an assistant project manager at a real estate company called ATC Construction. I am deeply committed to my work as a focused man should be. Well, here's my story about how I found love in my boss. Weird, right? Yes, stay tuned for my unusual tale. <laughs> So as a newly employed staff member, I started my work in this real estate company as an assistant project manager. As I mentioned earlier, I'm all about action and prefer to avoid lengthy discussions because I'm highly effective at my job. However, my boss's daughter, Mabel, seems to think otherwise. Yes, it's true that she works in the company and she appears to believe I'm competing with her for the contract I'm handling. My first encounter with Mabel was when she came into my office and spoke to me rudely. When I asked her who she was, she replied that she was my boss, my new manager. Wow, seriously. I explained that Mrs. Ironsi was the person who hired me, and she's the only one I recognize as my boss. Mabel then informed me that Mrs. Ironsi is her mother, and as the head of my department, she is indeed my manager. My God, what had I done? I quickly stood up, introduced myself, and apologized, extending my hand for a handshake. But she arrogantly told me to get my hand off her. I was shocked by her irritable attitude. Then, she instructed me to meet her in her office and to inform her about the meeting I had scheduled with one of our partners. She even told me to cancel the meeting. Can you imagine that? Does this lady realize how unreasonable she becomes when she's angry? But I guess that's how rich kids behave. I tried to explain the importance of the meeting and mentioned that my ride was already waiting outside, but she was so rude and consumed by unnecessary anger that she shouted at me to cancel both the meeting and the ride and to meet her in her office. God, I only applied for this job, not this drama. Help me, I said to myself as I quickly joined her. The next day, during a meeting with my boss, Mrs. Ironsi, and Mabel, Mrs. Ironsi agreed that I should meet with the partners, despite Mabel's insistence on canceling the meeting. Mabel, being prideful, claimed that it was insubordination because she had initiated the contract and it was handed over to me without Mrs. Ironsi informing her. Mrs. Ironsi then revealed that we had just closed a deal with the partners, which thrilled me and left Mabel speechless. Mrs. Ironsi announced that Mabel and I would be working together to execute the project. Trust me, Mabel was not happy about this arrangement. She told her mother that there was no way she would work with me on the project and that it wasn't possible for her to do so. Mrs. Ironsi bluntly responded that Mabel had no choice but to take on the project. In disbelief, Mabel asked if she would be removed from the project just because of me. Mrs. Ironsi firmly replied that while Mabel started the deal, I was the one who closed it, so it was only fair that we both see the project through. Mabel continued to argue that it wasn't right, but Mrs. Ironsi told her to make it right and not turn it into a competition. Mabel then looked at me with disdain in her eyes. Women with their territorial nature, even in business where it should be about mutual profit, that's amusing. At home with my coworker and friend Bolu, he asked me when we would be starting the project. I told him we had already begun and would officially kick off at the beginning of next month. Bolu then said he wished he were in my shoes, which surprised me. I asked him why, and he started talking about how he enjoys getting involved in anything that concerns Mabel. I was confused and asked what he meant. Bolu then began fantasizing about Mabel's body, so I asked if he was referring to the same Mabel we work with or someone else. He told me to stop pretending, claiming he knew I liked Mabel. I responded by saying, no and explained that the only reason I took the project was for the money I would make from it, and that's all. I also told Bolu that Mabel and I couldn't stand being in the same space and that the feeling was mutual. Bolu then advised me that if I wanted to enjoy my time at ATC Construction, I should avoid having any problems with Mabel. When I asked him why, he explained that Mabel is the only surviving child of the CEO and the next in line to take over the company. He said it would be best not to come between Mabel and Mrs. Ironsi because, in the end, I would be the one on the losing side. I had no doubts about his advice, but I decided to see how things would unfold as we continued our drinks. The next day, I arrived at the office five minutes late, and Mabel was already in my office. 
I quickly and sincerely apologized for being late, but she wouldn't accept it and started raising her voice at me, complaining about how she had been waiting for the past five minutes. Just five minutes and she was this angry, I thought to myself, what if I had been an hour late? Would she have slapped me? Hmm. I thought, let me just keep watching because I really don't know what this lady wants from me. I continued apologizing, but she said she didn't need my apologies. Fed up with her attitude, I couldn't hold back any longer. I raised my voice and asked her, what do you really want from me? To my surprise, she called me a common subordinate and said she hated me. I immediately told her that the feeling was mutual and no big deal. She was just shocked and was about to raise her voice at me again, but I interrupted her, saying, I wasn't done talking. I told her exactly what I thought and made it clear that I wasn't in competition with her so she could sleep well at night. She was left shocked and scared. She then asked if I had really spoken to her that way. I sarcastically replied, no, it was your ancestors I just spoke to. Immediately, she stood up, got in my face, and told me I was fired before walking away. I just looked at her thinking, small money and power, and now we can't have peace because you want to oppress us. Thank God we don't get oxygen from you, or many wouldn't be alive today. Later that day, I was coming down the stairs when a young man I had seen around the office a few times but didn't know stopped me and asked where I was going. I asked if he was talking to me, and he replied, The last time I checked, it's only you and me on these stairs, and then called me stupid. Not wanting to create any drama, I told him I would appreciate it if he got straight to the point. Kelvin started making empty threats, telling me to stay away from Mabel, but I wasn't moved. I simply told him I'd keep his threats in mind and left. When I got to my office, I told my colleague and friend Bolu about the man I had encountered. He then explained to me that Kelvin is Mabel's fiancé, leaving me amazed. Now I see they really deserve each other, I said unapologetically. Bolu then said he's trying to avoid Kelvin as much as possible because he doesn't know the exact relationship between Kelvin and Mrs. Ironsi. According to Bolu, whatever Kelvin says, Mrs. Ironsi agrees with, and she listens to him more than her own daughter, Mabel. Curious, I asked Bolu if Kelvin works with us. Bolu replied, Yes, but I don't know his job description. He comes to the office whenever he wants, and sometimes he doesn't come at all, yet at the end of the month, he gets his salary paid in full. Oh, really? Maybe he's a partner in the company, I suggested. Bolu interrupted, saying Mrs. Ironsi is the sole owner of the company and no one else. This left me confused, but that's not my business in this company. I need to focus on my job. A few days later, I went to one of the property sites with Bolu to check on the ongoing work. When I returned to the office, I found Mabel receiving a scolding from Mrs. Ironsi, who said she had made a mistake by pairing Mabel and me on the project. Mrs. Ironsi then announced her decision to remove either Mabel or me from the project. I raised my hand and told my boss that what happened at the site earlier that day was embarrassing and I wanted to discuss it with her. Mrs. Ironsi asked me to get to the point, so I told her I wanted to withdraw from the site activities and focus on office work instead. It was a tough decision for her to make, and she asked Mabel and me to leave her office. Later, Bolu came to me and said he had just seen Mabel going into the boardroom with the site manager. He wondered why I wasn't in the meeting with them. I told him I wasn't supposed to be there and that I was off the project. Bolu, curious as ever, asked why. I begged him not to press the issue because I wasn't ready to have that conversation. But Bolu kept asking. Frustrated, I told him he should work with Gistlover, the gossip blogger. Bolu joked that at least he'd get paid for it. He then speculated that Mrs. Ironsi wouldn't have taken me off the project and handed it to her daughter. To end the conversation, I told him I left the project willingly. Bolu, jokingly, said I couldn't handle being around Mabel because she's a hot chick. I responded by saying that it was clear he had no brain in his head and that no one makes decisions based on sexual fantasies. Bolu reminded me that I was supposed to earn three times my salary from the project and I told him that while we're all driven by money, some of us know when to push the brakes. Later, Mrs. Ironsi called me back to finish the project. Mabel then came to my office to thank me for the fantastic job I did with the workers at the site. I told her I was glad I could help. Mabel then asked why I reported the new developments at the site to her mother, 
as if she had done more of the work, even though I was the one who did the job. I told her that it didn't really matter who took the glory. What mattered was that everything went smoothly. Mabel thanked me, surprising me. When she noticed, she asked why I seemed surprised. I told her I wasn't expecting it from her. She then said she understood that I might think she's a terrible person. I told her I didn't think that. I just felt she was dealing with low self-esteem. From that moment, we became friends and started going out on dates. The next day at the office, Bolu asked if I was going to the construction site again. I told him no because Mabel had called me a few minutes ago asking me to get ready for something else. Bolu, ever the gossip, started guessing it might be another business meeting. While we were talking, Mabel walked in, looking elegant in her dress. Bolu complimented her, and she thanked him, but then said it was sad that I hadn't said she looked good. I told her I was about to, but Bolu beat me to it, and I went ahead and complimented her look. She then asked if I was ready, and I said yes. She mentioned that she had made reservations for both of us, and that she would be in her office waiting for me. Bolu, witnessing everything, remarked that it didn't seem like a business meeting to him. I had to admit that it didn't, but I still planned to go and find out. Later at home, I was discussing with Bolu, and he said, Mabel might be interested in me. I asked him if he thought so, just because she took me to a fancy restaurant to celebrate her birthday. Bolu insisted that Mabel likes me, asking why else she would take me out to celebrate her birthday with her fiancé present too. But I just brushed it off, because I don't see myself having anything with Mabel. The following day, Mabel came to my house, and I was surprised to see her. I told her I wasn't expecting her, and Mabel, with her usual arrogance, said she should go back to her house since she felt unwelcome. I had to stop her and invite her in. Mabel started telling me that she wants to call off the wedding with Kelvin. She explained that she ag agreed to marry Kelvin when she was younger and naive, and she didn't have much choice back then because of the relationship between their parents. I told her that just a few months ago, it seemed like she and Kelvin were very much in love. She asked if they really were, and when I said yes, she told me it wasn't what everyone thought. Mabel admitted that she agreed to walk down the aisle with Kelvin, but she knew it wouldn't be the marriage she had hoped for. When I asked her what changed her mind about Kelvin, she said someone came into her life and changed everything, her thoughts, actions, and reasoning. She was saying this while looking into my eyes. I asked her what she planned to do about it, but she said she didn't know. All she knew was that the wedding wouldn't happen. We went out on another date, and I started telling her how and why I'm still single and haven't been in a relationship yet. I asked her again what she planned to do about Kelvin, and she said she had no idea. She guessed she would just hang in there and wait for the person she had grown fond of to realize how much she wanted to be with him. I asked if the person she was talking about knew how she felt, and at that moment, she leaned in, kissed me, and said, I guess he knows now. Hey guys, she was really talking about me, and I didn't even realize it. That was funny. We started dating properly after that. However, because of my relationship with Mabel, I was sacked from my job and even got arrested by Mrs. Ironsi, who claimed I had kidnapped her daughter. But despite everything, I still loved Mabel and fought for our love. Finally, I was released from jail, and Mrs. Ironsi came to my house to apologize to both Mabel and me. She shared some great news. She would be retiring from her position as CEO and had appointed Mabel as the new CEO of the company. She also appointed me as the new project manager, and we were so happy. Mabel asked her mom about Kelvin, and she told us that she had already fired him. For real, guys, I didn't lose anything after all. I followed my heart, gave up everything to be with the woman I love, and I'm glad, I'm glad I never regretted my decision. So, this is the weird story I promised you. I fell in love with my boss, and now we're happy together. What did you learn from my story, guys? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to this channel for more interesting and latest Nigerian movie updates. See you next time.